Okay. Um, firstly, I'm recording these in the evening, which is why the lighting is a bit bad and it's a bit shadowy. I hope it's okay. Um, so before we move on from resolving forces, um, here are two questions from Maths Genie. Maths Genie does things in a slightly different order, so I can't just say go and do all the questions. They introduce friction, um, uh, which we haven't done yet. Um, friction is very straightforward, so it's not a big deal. But anyway, uh, these two problems don't involve friction. Um, firstly, have a look at this and see if you can add in the forces and the directions in which those forces are going in these two questions. OK, just pause the video and have a go at that. OK, so in the first one, we've got a tension, which is pulling it up. And that's at 65 degrees. You'll note I put 55 to start with, but I'm uh, fairly sure it's 65. Um, and you've got the weight of the particle. So we're not given the mass of the particle, but we are asked to find the weight. So I'm just going to call it P. So that's the weight in newtons, not the mass in kilograms. Uh, and down here, we've got a, uh, the particle has a mass of 10 kilograms. So we've got a weight of 10 G. And then you've got the two forces at the angles that we were already given. So um, we've got um, a fairly straightforward couple of equilibrium problems. And you know, just be clear, in both cases, we're dealing with equilibrium. So we know that when we resolve horizontally and when we resolve vertically, the forces will equal zero. So have a go at that. This one is fairly straightforward. Resolving horizontally, the P has no effect. So that's going like, to allow you to work out the size of T. And then resolve once you know t you can resolve vertically to work out p um, two is slightly more involved but yeah pause the video have a go at finishing both of those questions okay so here's the first one resolving horizontally i've got the 20 force here and then the horizontal component of t which is t cos 65 i know the angle so it's cos and that equals zero, so 20 equals t equals 65, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Resolving vertically, I've got the vertical component of t, and I don't know that angle, so it's sine 65 or cos 25. Uh, so t sine 65 minus p equals zero, so I get the value of p. And then with the second question, this is how far I've got so far. So I've got so I've resolved um, horizontally and I have said that this force has no effect horizontally so I've got uh, the horizontal component of that which is TB cos 60 sorry TB cos 35 um, minus TA cos 50 will equal zero because it's in equilibrium so that means that those two are the same. And resolving vertically, I've got, uh, don't know that angle, don't know that angle, so it's TA sine 50, TA uh, and plus TB sine 35 equal the force going down, which is 10G. I, I probably should have put minus 10G equals zero, but hopefully you're happy that those are equal. Um, so this is a bit trickier because neither of these equations has allowed me to work out either. But it's simultaneous equations, isn't it? So I can write TB like this. TA cos 50 over cos 35. And don't forget, I know cos 50, I know cos 35, or rather my calculator does. So I can then substitute that here. And that's going to give me just an expression in terms of TA. TA will feature twice, so I'll have to do some factorising. But again, pause and see if you can get somewhere with that question. OK, so I rewrote this um, equation, replacing TB with what TB was equal to, according to our horizontal um, uh, resolving. And then I've just basically said that's one big fraction and I factorise the TA. So I pulled the TA out of here and here, giving me sine 50 and cos 50 sine 35 over cos 35. 
and then all I need to do to get TA on its own is do 10G divided by all of this. And I didn't write that again, I just went straight to my answer. Now I know what TA is, I can go back up to here and say, right, TB is that answer, TA, and I use the exact value, not the rounded value, times cos 50 divided by cos 35, and I just typed that in as a fraction, 63.2. Okay, now, just pause at this point, make sure you're happy with those two answers, um, and happy with question one. If you're not, come and find me and ask for some help. If you are, go carry on. Okay, so here we have a development of uh, what we've been looking at. So here we've got a particle which has a, a mass of 0 0.1 kilograms and it is resting on a, an inclined plane on a slope. Uh, and it's being held in equilibrium, so obviously without any supporting force it would roll down the slope, but it's actually being held up the slope by a force F. And... Um, my first question is, what other forces are involved in this problem? Well, there are two. We've got the weight of the um, uh, particle, which always acts um, vertically down. And if it's got a mass of that, then its weight will be 0 0.1 g. We've got another force, though, the reaction force of the slope. So, you know, this... Um, particle is not falling into the slope because it's being held up and that always is perpendicular to the slope so that force is like that and when we deal with problems like this we tend and we don't have to actually we could work at whatever angle we want but we tend to resolve parallel to the slope so this is parallel i'm not going to right parallel again but that's parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope so from now on i'm just going to do the little arrows but but that's what those little arrows mean so i don't know if it's helpful to to turn it so that the slope is um sideways so if we sorry if the slope is um, horizontal. So if I'm resolving parallel to the slope, the first thing is the normal reaction force is at right angle, so it's not affected. I've got F pushing that way, and then I've got the um, horizontal component, sorry, it's not horizontal anymore, is it? The parallel component of this um, weight here. Now, um, normally we know the angle between this and the horizontal, or in this case the slope, um, it's 70 degrees in this case, because of it being a right angle triangle. Uh, okay, so let's write resolving parallel to the slope. So I've got F pulling it up, and then I've got 0 0.1 G cos 70, because I know the angle between the force and the direction I'm thinking, in this case parallel to the slope, and that angle is 70 and that equals zero. So I can go straight to saying, right, that and I can work out F. So I've got, uh, and we use uh, 9.8 for G, um, 0 0.1 times 9.8 times the cos of 70. Just check you're in radians. Sorry, just check you're in degrees, not in radians. Uh, right, that doesn't seem very big, but that is correct. Yeah, so that is 0 0.335 newtons. Okay, so the normal reaction force wasn't involved there, was it? So that's all good. And uh, let's think about perpendicular to the slope. So again, it might be helpful to turn it this way. So I've got this force going up, and then I've got the parallel component of this force. I don't know the angle, so it's going to be sine 70, or I could say that angle's 20, so it's cos 20. It doesn't really matter which way you do. Um, so I've got R going up minus 0.1g sine 70 coming down, which is 0. So 
that allows me to work out the value of that, sorry, the value of that. Uh, 0 0.1 times 9.8 times the sine of 70. Again, not very big, so that's 0 0.921 newtons. So when we are dealing with slopes, we tend to think about parallel and perpendicular to the slope, but everything else is the same. Let's have a go to second problem. OK, so here we've got a rock, uh, still modelling it as a particle. Remember, particle has no dimensions, but does have a mass. So it's a rock of mass, nine kilograms. Um, it's on a smooth plane, smooth keyword there. So we're not worried about friction. Friction is not complicated, but we, we're not going to add it in there just yet. Let's add in the extra forces. So we've got the weight of the rock, which is 9g, and then the reaction force, which is perpendicular to the slope, which we don't yet know. So let's just think about some angles here. So this angle here, in a minute I'm going to resolve parallel to the slope. So that angle there, can you hopefully see that that's 35? And that means that this angle here, because this is a right angle triangle, if we drop that line all the way down here, uh, that is going to be uh, 55. OK, so let's, I'm, I want you to resolve parallel to the slope. So you've got T going upwards and you've got the, nine, uh, the 10 Newton force, or the component of that force, pushing upwards as well. So those two working together. And then you've got the um, mass, sorry, the weight coming down. You've got the parallel component of that. This force is not involved at all. And then see if you can resolve vertically, sorry, see if you can resolve perpendicular to the slope to work out the value of R. So we're going to work out the value of T and the value of R by those two separate resolvings. And so we're going to go parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. Pause and have a go. OK, I think this is com confusing and uh, you can see I've got myself in a mess. So going parallel to the slope. So going up the slope, I've got T, and I've got this 10 Newton force. That's pushing it up the slope, isn't it? It's not parallel, though, so it's 10 Newtons times the cos of 35. That's the um, parallel component of that force. If I know the angle between the force and the direction I'm working in, it's cos if it's 90 minus N sine. So those two forces are pushing it up. I've then got the um, parallel component of that force, and I know the angle is 55, so that's minus 9g cos 55, and that equals zero because it's in equilibrium. So I've got the two forces going up, the one force coming down, and then I just add that and take that away from both sides. Then resolving parallel, and this is, I think, particularly tricky. You've got R, which is parallel, so there's no angle involved there. And that's the only force pulling it up. You've got two forces pushing it down. This force is actually a downward force. I could sort of carry that, carry that line on, and the angle there would be um, 35. So I don't know the angle in that direction, so it's uh, 10 sine 35. So that's working against that. And the other force that's also pulling it down is this one. And that's the angle. I don't know the angle, so it's sine 55, or you could say cos 35. Um, and they equal zero. So the R, take away that, take away that, equals zero. And then it's just a bit of rearranging. So these slopes are tricky. And, um, you know, it is worth spending a bit of time on this practicing. So let's choose some practice. OK, so I think this is really tricky, so I think this is really important that you can do this. And as I keep saying, you can't see me if you can't. So 
um, in the online CGP book. So this is still in CGP, not in our active teach book. Uh, page 87, 6 and 8, there are two questions with missing forces. And then back a page, page 86, question 3 is where you don't know the angle of the plane. Um, now I can't actually tell you the paper version, I can't see the paper version at the moment. Um, so I will add the relevant page numbers from the paper version in the description below when the books arrive, which I'm hoping will be um, not too long. Anyway, make sure you can do those and the third video will be along soon.